aware. Dr. Salisbury, 1860s, is that what it was? Something like that? 1850s. There. Yeah, yeah. He, he basically wrote a book that was like a clinical, today we would kind of call it like a clinical, a clinical report. It was like, here's what's been going on in my practice for the past 10 years and how I've been healing people. And yeah. these are the symptoms, these are the problems, and here's how I'm doing it. And the solution in most of the cases was eat stewed beef. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and don't eat anything else. And like, right. yeah, and that's what the the Salisbury steak is from. I always thought that that was um, like a, a place name, you know, like Salisbury, England. Right. You know? yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was named after him, and the, and the reason it was special, the the what made it different from just ground beef or mince was that they, they, he grounded it in a specific way that you could you could um, filter out like all the gristle. And that just made it that just made it so you would absorb like 100 percent of it. And because he was right. dealing with people with like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, we had, we had no medications for back then. So these these people were in trouble and they were having horrible, horrible, horrible times. And he was saying, they like, no, this is really important to do it this way. You need to get all the gristle out so that they can absorb absolutely everything in their small intestine. And they had like no waste. You know, so these people were just like cre creating no waste and, uh, and they could actually let their, their, their bowels rest and heal, which is very, very important. And that's what we do now in medicine. You know, when you have, to, when you have like, you know, surgery on your, on your bowels, or you have, um, you know, an infection, diverticulitis, uh, even appendicitis, we treat these conservatively mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, with medications, you put them on a low residue diet where it's just exactly the same thing, just low residue, meaning not much is coming out as waste. Out. Yeah. So it's right. like basically no fiber whatsoever. You know, so the idea that fiber is good for you is, I mean, it's completely contra contradicted by that, that, you know, yeah. anytime you're having a problem, we just go like, Oh God, no, 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 geez, no, no, no fiber. Just stay away. And then as soon as it's done, like, oh, you better get that fiber in you, you know, like, well, where, where were you, you know, yesterday, you know, when you were saying that like fiber is like super bad for you. The, I remember this as a kid in the eighties, you know, they, they said explicitly, you know, multiple times, you know, like you should eat fiber for a couple of reasons. One, because you can't digest it. You can't get any nutrition from it, but it, it will, it's bulky. And so it will, will stretch out your stretch receptors and make your brain think that you're, that you're full. So you'll trick your body into thinking that you've eaten something. I'm like, your body's not that dumb. It's certainly not as dumb as you are. <laughs> and so, you know, or the second one was that, well, you know, because everyone was getting uh, constipated after they stopped eating enough fat. And they're like, well, what's going on? Like, no one ever had this problem before. Uh, I'm sure they did have the problem, but not in the numbers. And then all of a sudden, everyone's getting constipated. And they're like, well, you know, you, what you should do? Fiber. Fiber is a good idea. And then that can, and it was all this theory about, you know, peristalsis and things like that. But that was never a thing you know, before like the 1980s. And so yeah. th these were just, these were just sort of thrown out there. But the, the whole point was you can't break it down. You can't digest it. You can't get energy or nutrition from it.